On today's episode, Missy and I are talking about turning things inside out. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. And this is the podcast where Missy and I talk about daily life tips where we can work toward finding our happiness and inner peace. And we can do it in a very practical way. So um, today we're talking about turning things inside out. We'll explain what that means. But uh, how you doing, Missy? You're You're... In a nice outdoor, I'm assuming real, not green screen setting. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is real. This is where I live, luckily. <laughs> um, but I miss you, Chris. I, I, we haven't seen each other in a couple weeks and uh, we haven't got to chat. So um, things are going really good for me. And how are things for you? Awesome. Yeah. Schedules, you know, they, they just get in the way of things yeah. like podcasts. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, another good lesson that we do like to teach everybody, you know, about living in the moment and the patience and all things in, in their right time. And I guess this is one of those that. Going with the flow. You know, That's it. We just it, go. With it the flow. took a bit to get here, but here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Um, oh boy. <laughs> but not once again in my shed because after a few weeks of nice warm weather and cutting the grass and putting the flowers out and just enjoying the outdoors. My temperature is now in the thirties and it's windy out. Yeah. So I do not. Yes, I'm, and I'm going to try not to gloat. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I am in front of my green screen and I don't know if I'm going to put something on the screen or just leave it green, but um, yeah, it, it's not outside, unfortunately. And it's just very bizarre. Yeah. So I know places not too far from me got snow, a few inches of snow. Yeah, it's and, crazy. And uh, same thing. They were like, hey, we, you know, we were cutting our grass over the weekend, and now we got a few inches of snow on the ground. So Yeah. That's insane. I, you know, I don't miss that. I mean, I'll tell you that it got kind of hot here last week, but this morning I woke up and it was 60 degrees outside, and we went for a little stroll, and, and now it's – Beautiful. It's probably 75, 80 degrees. And I know everybody's going, shut up. I hate you. But, um, <laughs> you know, this is yeah. the choice we made, right? <laughs> but it's all good. I got, again, I, I like my shed. I got my, my little heater going and my dog is sitting by my feet. So nice. what more can I want? That's right. That's right. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds like you, you have a perfect out picturing of what's going on up here. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> so I've got, so got to see if I can come up with a, a green screen thing. So, you know, if, if you're going to watch this video, you're either going to see a green screen behind me the whole video, or there's going to be some something <laughs> there. And um, whatever ends up being back there is going to be not real. Yeah. But it is all about perception. So <laughs> could put a tropical setting. I, I, I could sprinkle my forehead with water just to make it look like I'm sweating in the heat of a tropical yeah. setting. You, you're trying to compete with me, right? Yeah. <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> so, not going to happen. But, yeah. but it is kind of interesting to our topic, though, because, you know, when we look at this, you know, turning things inside out and reflecting on what our thoughts can do Mm -hmm. your feelings is one of my uh things that I, I say all the time is you know perception is reality so uh, i guess uh, if i did put a nice tropical setting in the background spray my head and give the impression yeah um 
that becomes my reality and and sure. it would become the reality of people watching the videos so well, even uh, i guess that is about turning things inside out because it's not really my reality right now <laughs> even if it's not real it sounds fun right it sounds and, fun yeah i think that's that's uh you know uh you know getting to the topic i feel like that's where i had to start to learn you know um what was happening around me was a result of subconscious and conscious thoughts so if i believed that you know people um would do me wrong right then i might have people in my space who were stealing from me or lying to me or or things like that and uh and in cleaning it up mentally just the conscious part of it you know those things start to dissipate but if they're still showing up then that could be part of your subconscious and what needs healing in your soul. And so I thought that would be a really important topic to start. You know, hopefully we can make people aware that, you know, you're out picturing your world by, by what's happening and what's going on inside of you. you know, mm -hmm. Not because things happen to you, they happen for you so that you have the ability to uh, start to grow and heal through, through that process. I have a client right now who I guess I've had for a little over a year now um, dealing with a lot, but, but one of the coping mechanisms is, is there have been attempted suicides um, mm -hmm. and still at times some suicidal thoughts. Um, and we've worked a lot with that. And this person has grown a lot with that in, in their understanding Um and they just recently were asked uh, at their job if they would consider a different position. And this position would be a liaison position with the community uh, regarding suicides. Wow. And they would work with suicide survivors and suicide groups and, uh, you know, really see what the community needs to assist. Right. And one of the things this person has said to me was, well, I don't know if I could do that because look at my history and, you know, it could be uh, triggering and all. But one of the things that I mentioned was, could this be the reason that you, that you got well it. in the first place? Yeah, yeah. And, and the reason that they went through it, because, I mean, sometimes you have to go through it to get through it to show other people how to get through it, too, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I mean, I had some, a similar experience in my own life years ago, and I know I've talked about it on the show before, is uh, that I was, you know, I was at that point, I was suicidal and, you know, just waiting for the Lord to take me, just take me, please, 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 I just don't want to be here. And I had, um, I used to marry people, I was an ordained minister, and I had a, a friend who contacted me, I married him and his wife. And he reached out to me. I'm like, why is this guy bothering me? <laughs> like, get off my back, get away from me. You know, and then he just, he was persistent. And so finally I responded and he told me like, I'm reaching out to you because you married me because you're ordained as a minister, which I have no religious background. I mean, you know, no, no counseling, you know, abilities mm -hmm. at that point. And he says, I'm thinking of committing the un unforgivable sin. Like I want to take my life. And I was like, sprung into action immediately in talking this gentleman off of the ledge was able to talk myself off the ledge you know and so the message wasn't just for him it was for me as well mm. but I needed him to basically open up the pipeline and let the love flow through me so that I could hear what I needed to hear and you know assist him in the meantime so it really wasn't just for him it was for me as well um, so that very well could be what your client's experiencing is, is just going through something like that to be able to hear the lesson for themselves and share the lesson with somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, yep. um, ha have, have you and I ever talked about the quadrants in, in, you know, I, I don't believe that we have Def I don't think definitely on the show we haven't, I, I don't think we have. Okay, so I'm going to share with you, and this could be, you know, and this is not my work. This is just something that I'm sharing. Um, it basically comes from uh, Dr. Carolyn Fuqua, I believe, uh, has created this analogy. And um, uh, she's amazing. She works with A Course in Miracles. But it's, it's like at 12 o'clock, 
we're in the Garden of Eden, okay? And, and I'm not saying this in a religious sense. I'm just saying, like, basically we're with God, okay? And, and then we have to go through the fall. So in quadrant between 12 and 3, we begin the fall. It's complete darkness. We're doing things that are, you know, uh, putting guilt into our clean consciousness of, of yep. being spirit. So we have, you know, murders and rapes and, and tragedy and, and stealing and theft and lies and all those kind of things that we're starting to hold guilt for between 12 and, and one. I mean, sorry, 12 and three. So between three and six, we start to come into the light a little bit. We're, we're, we're recognizing uh, things, but we're not completely understanding that this is all happening for us. So we're, we're, the, um, we're blaming everybody. We're projecting out into the world. Like it's your fault. You did it. It's, you know, um, it's, it's that state of mind that we're living in between uh, three and six. So between six and nine, we start to realize that everything is happening for us. So this is kind of what the inside out is, is that it's like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, there must be something in my soul from the guilt of, of theft that is needing to be healed because I just got my car broken too, you know, and, and that's what's just happened to me. So that must be like, okay, well, I acknowledge it. I, I'm willing to forgive it. I'm willing to let that guilt go. And then what's next, you know, ask what's next to, to be able to become the person who can forgive that. And um, that's quadrant six through nine. So in nine through 12, we are literally coming back to being with God and, and being in full super consciousness where, you know, we can constantly recognize it, constantly cleaning out has very little effect on our lives. And it's not that we go through this process linear, okay? It's not like Mm -hmm. we're in one, then two, then three, then four. It doesn't happen like that. We jump around a lot, you know? And that's what I think that most people start to recognize as you get further along through consciousness, you start to recognize that that this is all happening so that you can heal yourself. And in healing, Mm -hmm. I heal you because I believe, and, you know, maybe our audience does, maybe you do, but um, I believe that because we're all drops in this larger ocean, right? We're, we're all parts of God walking it out. We're all here to do Mm -hmm. a job and we attract the people that are going to help us clean that stuff out, you know, let go of the guilt, forgive it. Whether it's in this lifetime that we did it, we're currently doing in this lifetime, or we've done it in a concurrent lifetime, you know, it's all for the greater good of healing consciousness and expanding on that. So I know that was a lot, but. (laughs) (laughs) But it is all great stuff. Um, And, uh, Maybe if we can find a, a, a really good summary link to that, yeah. we, we can add it to the description um, because it, it really is good stuff. And, and I totally agree with you, you know, and and there, there is to me the, the whole thing of purpose. And, you know, when I look at, you know, what is happiness and inner peace, you know, one of the things I, I talk about is purpose, you know, yeah. finding uh, that purpose in life and um Sometimes that purpose, I think, is in what you were saying, is, is that it it comes from our past, our history, um, so that we can learn from mm. this history, this past, yeah. to be able to better affect what we need to do. Right. You know, and, and where when some people say, like, why am I going through this pain? Why am I going through, you know, tragedy or whatever it may be? I don't have an answer. Right. Except to say, who knows down the road what you're going to take with you that is going to either aid and help you in something bigger or that you're there to help other people. Right. And and that's, to me, that's what's turning it inside out, right? You know, instead mm-hmm. of asking why, why is this happening to me? Why, you know, what can I do about it? Even, even a doing, it's more like, okay, where do I need to? clean up what I'm doing. And so I think I've, I might have said this on, on uh, our show before, but I was attracting micromanaging um, narcissistic people. And I was like, why me? Like, why am I getting that? And, and so I didn't get anywhere with that answer is what I'm getting at. And, but when I started to look at, okay, where am I doing that? Where am I currently doing that? Have I done it before? Probably. Am I doing it now? Because if I'm doing it now, then they're going to keep showing up for me. 
because mm-hmm. they're going to show me myself, right? That's what the out picturing of what's going on inside is. And, um, and so I started to really look and not in an analytical way, not in a judgmental way, but I was doing it to my kids, you know, so I have a higher power, you have a higher power, so do they. And if, if I don't, if I'm bossing them around and tell them what to do and how to do it and when to do it and all that kind of stuff, then, then that means that I don't have a higher power because I'm the one that's trying to control them. Right. And, and so I really had to kind of take a step back and let that go and come from a different place when I was talking to them, you know, which I, Hey, I'll be honest with you. I'm a mom and, and I still have challenges. I still am learning and they teach me so much all the time. Um, but once I lessened the reins, once I backed that up again, People were not allowed to vibration, vibrationally could not stay in my space that were doing those things, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I I would lose clients and be like, okay, that was good news. Not, not because I didn't want them there because I wanted to help them, but, but because I wasn't a vibrational match anymore. They couldn't show me that side of myself because I was willing to give it forth and let it be healed. And and in my world, that's forgiving, not Chris, you did something wrong with me. And I, I release you of that, you know, um, that wrongdoing, but forgiving is giving it forth to God to allow him to do the work, to let it be healed in your life. Yep. No, most definitely. And, and the whole thing about turning that power and control over to a higher power. Yeah, I, I think it is so important, um, you know, because one of the things that we strive toward is to be in control of everything. Right. That, that's what humans do. And when you look at uh, very basically your stress and your anxieties, it's probably a, over something that you don't have any control over, but you're trying to mm. have control over. Yeah. Uh, so you find the areas of life that we do have control over. And act accordingly but those areas that we don't we have to just turn over yeah you know and and to say that we have no control but do we believe that something has control over this Mm. um and is going to take care of it yeah but i need to step back because this isn't mine to take care of right i have my stuff to take care of that's not in surrender too right i mean which we've had a podcast on that before but this is also the law of polarity, right? The law of polarity mm-hmm. is okay, light and dark, good and bad. You know, the, we can call it even judgment, right? You know, but the left side of the pole is the spirit driven side of the pole, the oneness that creates us all. The right side of the pole is the egoic side of the pole where it's me mm-hmm. and, I and, and no one else. And I'm out to fend for myself. And it's, it's, it's a matter of that fast, you know, a, a click of your fingers that you can switch sides and realize that you're coming from the, the place of being um, part of that whole to, to start to heal that for everybody. And, and you can tell the difference. You can tell, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you might have to bleep me out, but I'm going to say this because I think it's funny. Um, so, so one of our, uh, one of my old te- uh, coaches, her coach said, you know, it's like, what's, how can you tell the difference? Well, the difference is, you know, it's, be, it's like a slap in the face or sexual pleasure. And I'll say it that way because that's more, more uh, <laughs> etiquette, but it's like, you know, the difference, right? You know, what feels good. A slap in the face does not feel good. And that's what happens when you're coming from an egoic space. It just ends up you know, making you feel bad, you feel guilty, you're, you know, you're living in your mind about it being analytical. And why did I do it that way? Or why did they do it that way? Um, the other thing is just like, wow, that was great. You know what I mean? Like, oh, wonderful. That was just phenomenal. And you don't think about it anymore. You just keep going, mm-hmm. going and you move forward and you stay in a present space and, and it's just wonderful. And so um, you don't have to know when you're living in the present, you don't have to know when you're coming from spirit, when you're, when you're out for the highest and best good for everybody, because it just feels right. Right. You know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that, that is very true. And, and, you know, if you really reflect on uh, what you're saying, that there is that piece about it, 
because there is a lot of that letting go and surrender component that, you know, I don't have to deal with this. I don't have to worry about this. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's just knowing that you're already set up to win, like whatever. And, and then you start to turn things around and you go like, Oh wait, what can I see that where, where can the good from this come from that I can't even see yet. And you start to be curious about why things are happening. That curiosity solves so many uh, suffer, so much suffering. It, 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 it absolves you of it. And, and then it lets your mind be at peace, which is what, mm-hmm. what we're here to help you do in, on this podcast. Yep. It, it just reminded me that the other day I was watching an episode of the TV show, mom. And, uh, I, I highly recommend the show, although I hear this is the last season, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, maybe they'll, they'll keep it going. But <laughs> for those who haven't seen it, it, it it's a 30-minute comedy. Um, but the whole premise is around a group of women who are in recovery. And there's a lot of things that talk about addiction and recovery. And they show them at meetings. And just, just awesome from that viewpoint. But to what we were saying is in, in the latest episode, one of the people who's been in recovery for ages and all these ladies are friends right. is bemoaning that one of their friends who's recently in recovery, all of a sudden is like being extremely successful, you know, at, at getting her job and, and getting these pay increases, was able to get a new car was, you know, all of this, what was flowing and, that this other one said to her sponsor, when do I get the prizes and money? Mm -hmm. I've been in recovery longer. Well, when do I get the prizes Mm -hmm. and money? And it was great because the sponsor said, you have prizes and money. Right. You have a great husband. You're reuniting with your kids. That's your prizes and money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what I think, you know, when, when we're saying this, you know, is I think for people to, you know, we have to change our perspective on to what is success, what is our prize. Um, and and I, I just thought that was so great for her to say that, yeah. um, you know, that we all get them in different ways. And it, it's just in how do you experience it? How do you relate to it? How would you define it? all of those qualities of success. One of the laws of mastery, and I, I think there's like five rules of mastery, and I don't know them all, but I do remember this one specifically. It's being grateful for everything, everything. And yep. look, it took me a long time to get here. You know what I mean? Like I, I've been doing this work for years and um, don't get me wrong. I used to compare. I would do the same thing that young lady did, you know, on the show. I would be mm-hmm. like, well, when do I get my fancy business and when am I going to get clients like that? And how come and why? And, you know, and that wasn't spirit led, a spirit led place. It was coming from ego. Like why, you know, like I'm not good enough. And, and I had to heal that. I had to clean that out. And now I'm like the place that I'm at, you know, I don't want to say I'm, Oh, I'm rolling in the dough. It's not like that, but I am feeling very good and grateful about everything. The, the ability to share the, the ability to give the ability to not even worry about if somebody pays me back or not, just, you know, that it keeps coming. It's that karma is there. It's going to come back to you. And I don't give because I'm waiting for it to come back for me. I give because not because I'm trying to fix somebody else's, things because there's nothing broken but but because I'm led and I feel good Mm -hmm. to it's like oh all of a sudden I get an idea like oh uh so and so is about to travel somewhere I'm gonna send him a hundred dollars for gas you know and I'm just gonna do it and 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 they're like why'd you do that like I didn't need it I'm sure you didn't need it I wasn't asked because you needed it it was Mm -hmm. because I was told that that's what I should do with my money and that's what I'm doing with my money And I mean, you know, uh, it takes a long time to get to that place, you know, and some of us, you know, may, you know, some of you may be there already and that's wonderful, but some of you may not, but, and that's okay because you're exactly where you're supposed to be. 
as long as we continue to try to grow and improve, maybe that's the wrong word. Um, I totally agree with you. You know, where we are right now is where we're meant to be right now. Right. As long as you're not saying I've made it. No, God, because you'll, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll be, I'll be aiming to make it every day for the rest of my life because, and, and that's the thing, uh, like Abraham Hicks says, you're never going to get it done. And it what is how, oh, gosh, I lost it now, but it's like, it's once you get to that place, you're going to want to be at a new place. So you're never going to yeah. get Right. And and so that's great. That's a growth mindset, you know, and exactly. And I like to point out that when you are attached to the outcome, that's when we suffer. Right. So if you go with the flow and you just are like, look, it's going to happen when it happens. And, and, you know, you're patient and you just keep aiming for the goal. I, I know I've said before, it's it's not ready uh, aim fire. It's ready, fire, aim. You leap, you go after it and you just keep aiming until you get where you want to go. Mm-hmm. So goals in the linear sense of timeline, I think are even, sometimes it's too much pressure. Like it's, it's too much because you're never going to know if it's going to happen in that timeline. You can set your intention and you can be very intentional aiming for it and working. Mm-hmm. It every day. And I think that's phenomenal. And what do they say? You you can still shoot for the moon and you'll land ab- among the stars. You'll get close, you know, but if you don't get there by that date, don't beat yourself up. Don't, don't attack okay. the outcome because it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. So yep. totally agree. And, and just again, listen to the words and, and your stress and anxiety can melt away. Yeah, because you, you get this mental image of how that would feel like if we were to do exactly what you're saying. It it does just melt away. Yeah, and, and it's there's practice. a freedom built into that. Yeah, and it's practice. I mean, you're mm-hmm. not going to walk out. You're not going to end this podcast and and just go. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But when you set your intention, you'll start to remember, oh, wait, and, and I'm going to slow down from my emotions a little bit. I'm going to take a step back. It's like it's like zooming in on a lens and like, let's say, a bee on a flower or panning back yep. and seeing the entire flower bed. You know, when you start to look with an observer's point of view at what's going on in your life, you'll start to check things out in a different way. And um, so I think that might be a good listener challenge this week. Oh, how do you feel about that? Oh, I like it because I, I've been, I've been trying to think in the background as we're talking, what, what's going to be a listener challenge. And it's like, it's like I, I asked um, a coach one time, um, how come you can help somebody else fix the same problem that you're going through, but you can't fix it for yourself? And they said, well, you can be in it, but not of it, right? You're in it mm-hmm. when you're in it, but when you're, of, when you're just watching it, it's totally different. You have a totally different perspective. And yep. so my challenge, our challenge, I would suggest is that you try to take a back seat from not being in the movie, but watching the movie and seeing how it's playing out so that you have the ability to turn these things inside out and start to practice so that you can heal. And we can, we can all benefit from when you heal, whatever you're going through. So I'm going to do my best for you guys. And I know Chris will do his best so we can start to, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll, uh, you know, all start to elevate each other into a higher, higher, higher level of consciousness. If I can speak today. That That was a tongue twister. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, I, I, I love that uh, challenge. I, I can't wait to see what people can write down and send to us and, you know, connect with us on social media and all let us know how you're doing on that challenge. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a big one this time. Absolutely. But uh, definitely a doable one. And um, yeah, th- this was great messaging. Yeah. Um, you know, of just looking at turning turning our thoughts inside out. 
Absolutely. And oh, uh, really good book, by the way, if anybody is really curious of where this thought process came from, Michael O'Neill wrote a book and it's called The Inside Out Revolution. Phenomenal book, very quick read. And uh, I highly suggest, you know, this, it will dive a little bit deeper into what we discussed here today. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Chris, I really appreciate your time always. Yep. And same with you, Missy. And and hopefully our temperature warms up or yours cools down or whatever. Um, so appreciate it. And, um, and thank you know, you if you really like this listeners. podcast, you know, <laughs> let, let's spread the word. Tell, tell people about this uh, so we can uh, keep sharing this message. And if you have any thoughts on topics, uh, please drop us a line. There's a lot of ways to get in touch with us. So let us Absolutely. know what your thoughts are. Yep. And thanks but so much. Thank you, everyone. All right. We love you guys. Mm-hmm.